Hey y'all, it's uh, Mr. Delight again. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about some stuff going on in the early Cold War. So after the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, remember things calmed down quite a bit because we came so close to nuclear apocalypse that um, both us and the Soviet Union decided that we need to take a step back a little bit. And we talked about the hotline um, between the Kremlin and the White House before and how that helps ease back on some of the tensions and stop a nuclear war from breaking out. There's also the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, or Partial Test Ban Treaty, um, that gets signed by the United States, the Soviet Union, and over 100 other countries in 1963 to ban any atmospheric te testing of nuclear weapons uh, anywhere in the world, right? So no more blowing up tiny islands in the Pacific, no more blowing up random chunks of the desert and letting people go to the top of Vegas hotels and watch them, right? All that has to stop because we realize that there's too much ambient radiation being released into the world, right? Like, I mean, because there were more than 2,000 total nuclear tests between all the countries that had them. So things are getting a little bit out of hand and everybody realizes that that might cause some problems, right? There had been a Japanese fishing boat in 1954 that had, uh, you know, been exposed to radiation and several people got sick. Obviously, Godzilla is part of uh, that. Wait, no, wait, no, hold on. That's that's wrong. Um, although that's, that is what Godzilla is based on is uh, radioactive iguanas or something like that. But anyway, this treaty also banned tests underwater, obviously, and it banned testing in space too. Because one, they're not sure what the radiation is going to do in space, and two, if you start nuking space, then you interfere with satellite communications and all that um, by frying the electronics. But uh, it's important to note that there are a couple of countries that don't sign the test ban treaty. France and China, um, importantly, don't. Um, later, nuclear states like North Korea or Iran, they're also not signatory to the treaty, which is part of why um, you know people t tend to be more worried about Iran and Korea's uh, nuclear programs, although the North Koreans at least have only tested underground so far. Um, now, the other treaty that kind of follows up to this is the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty um, in 1968, which just tries to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons to anybody new, right? So any nuclear weapons technology getting to new countries is now something that the international community usually works together to try and stop. Um, again, Iran and North Korea would be notable exceptions to this, but most countries have agreed not to even try to develop nuclear weapons. And uh, real quick, just to continue our discussion of some of the proxy wars and things that are going on, um, during the Cold War. We've already talked about Korea and Vietnam. We'll get into Afghanistan later on. But there's also some stuff going on in uh, Africa and Central America. So in Angola, um, they had won independence from Portugal in 1975. So again, a little late on the uptake, one of the last colonies to break off from European control. And that independence comes after a 14-year-long war. And that means that Angola is, I mean, reeling from the cost of the war, from the devastation, and also after they declare independence, there's also pretty significant ethnic strife in the country. And some of it was ethnic issues from European-drawn colonial borders, just like we've seen in other places like the Middle East, where Europeans just completely disregard ethnic rivalries that have been sometimes over a thousand years. And so the result here is a three-way split in the Angolan Civil War. Um, there's major groups in this multi-ethnic country that all want control of specifically Angola's diamond resources, because obviously diamonds are valuable. So we've got the Mundu tribe, which is backed by the United, uh, by the Soviet Union, sorry, by the USSR. And then we've got the Bangkongos that are backed by us in the United States. And then South Africa jumps in and backs the Ovimbundu tribe as well. And that civil war ends up lasting for 27 years and doesn't come to a stop until 2002. Um, so Angola has barely been out of its own ethnic conflict for 20 years. And that said, tensions are still pretty high in Angola, um, despite having a Republican government that has a pretty tenuous control on uh, or c control of the country. But um, you can see that the effects of these Cold War conflicts last up to basically now. Um, in Central America, Nicaragua is one of the places where um, we have another uh, another proxy war between the Contras and the Sandinistas, and it's called the Contra War. Um, you may recognize it from learning about the Iran Contra scandal during Reagan's presidency, but the uh, Sandinistas were a communist group that had overthrown the dictatorship in 1979. It was a group called the Somozo family that uh, had uh, ruled Nicaragua for a while. And the Sandinistas come in and they start putting all these communist policies in place, in, in place that not everybody wants. And the Contras, the anti-communist conservative group, 
start fighting back against the Sandinistas in the Contra War that lasts from 81 to 88. And, of course, the U.S. isn't going to just sit out, especially as close to our own border as Nicaragua is. And so we heavily supported the Contras with money, with weapons. Um, but there's a couple of problems here. One, um, Congress had actually passed a law making it illegal to help the Contras because they make most of their money off of dealing cocaine. And while it's important for us to fight against communism, we don't want to be seen to be supporting drug dealers, right? But Reagan and his administration helped the Contras anyway because stopping communism is important to them. And um, this whole major scandal evolves over Reagan's support called the Iran-Contra Affair, where basically Reagan ended up uh, selling a bunch of weapons to the Iranians to help them in the Iran-Iraq war that was happening at the same time. And he took that money and used it to support the Contras. And like, there's some speculation that the CIA bought vast amounts of cocaine. And it's just, it's a whole thing that Reagan ends up not getting impeached or anything over it because he, you know, he says he's sorry and he says he didn't know what was going on. But it is the biggest scandal of Reagan's presidency by far. One of the major scandals of American history. Um, but anyway, the Civil War in Nicaragua ends in 1989 with the Taylor Accord um, and results in, for the most part, the election of anti-communist uh, parties and democratic elections. And Nicaragua, for the most part, is still democratic today. Um, but anyway, the last chunk of all this with uh, you know nuclear test ban treaties and everything in the wake of the Cuban Missile Crisis and these proxy wars is the anti-nuclear weapon movement that starts, mostly after that 1954 incident I was talking about with the Japanese fishing boat. Um, Japan is really the, the leader of the anti-nuclear movement early on because American nuclear testing had been affecting, uh, like say, the fishing catch and stuff like that um, in the Pacific. And something like a third of Japan's population signed a petition against nuclear weapons in 1955. And they got joined by other citizens from around the world. And this movement gains a lot of ground in the 70s and 80s. Um, there's even millions of people that end up protesting in the United States with support. Um, there's also, like, they have allies with, uh, like, the anti-nuclear energy movement. Um, like, after Three Mile Island in 1979, uh, which was our biggest nuclear disaster, there were a lot of, like, hippies and stuff like that that uh, joined the anti-nuclear movement where they didn't want any nuclear weapons, they didn't want any nuclear power plants, they didn't want any testing, none of that. Um, even though nobody died and nobody even ended up in a hospital after Three Mile Island, this is a movement that gains ground kind of adjacent to the environmental movement. Um, and unfortunately, that's resulted in us not building any more nuclear power plants since 1979. But anyway, this was a pretty quick one. Uh, that's where I'll stop for right now. Uh, I'll talk more about the spread of communism in some of the other countries uh, that have it and maybe some land reform in the next video.